I'm Alex Michelson. This week, the issue is the 2020 race. Presidential candidate Marianne Williamson is here. She has a wildly devoted following. Why she's now perhaps pitching the most controversial policy idea of all. I propose a plan for reparations for slavery. Also making news this week, raising the bar. That is Attorney General Bill Barr, whose refusal to testify before a House committee some are calling chicken. Our panel of pundits ready to jump on these issues, pin them to the mat. You see them right there. John Cobalt, Melanie Mason, Areva Martin. The issue is starts right now. And we continue our series with the presidential candidates. Our guest this week has millions of followers and hopes to lead a nation of 327 million people. Marianne Williamson is here. She's an author, lecturer, activist, and currently candidate for president of the United States. She has written 13 books, including four New York <coughs> Times bestsellers with titles such as A Return to Love, A Politics of Love, A Year of Miracles, and The Law of Divine Compensation. She is the founder of one of the most beloved charitable organizations in all of Southern California, Project Angel Food, which provides free meals for men and women too sick to shop and cook for themselves. Back in 2014, she ran for Congress and finished fourth. Congressman Ted Lieu ended up winning that seat, but that race wet her <coughs> appetite for something much bigger, a run for the White House. Here's her announcement. Let us prove them wrong. Let us make history. Let us more than make history. Let us make this a more beautiful world. I'm ready for this, ladies and gentlemen. Please join with me. Let's lay this down. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. Marianne Williamson, welcome to The Issue Is. Good to Thank have you. you here. Thank you, Thank so, you so much. much. Okay, so there's like 85 candidates running for president of the United States. So why you? Why are you the most qualified of all of them? I don't think I'm the most qualified. I think I am as qualified. And I think we need at this time to expand our sense of what the qualifications are. I don't think people whose careers have been spent for years entrenched in the same system that drove us into this ditch are the only people who should be considered qualified to take us out. You know, Franklin Roosevelt said that the primary role of the presidency is moral leadership. I think we need to expand our sense of political qualification and political need at this time to include a level of wisdom and understanding about how people operate, how systems operate that go way beyond mere political mechanics. Perhaps the most controversial uh, <coughs> issue that you've advocated for so far is reparations for those who were impacted by slavery generations ago. Um, how would that work? My plan is to have a council, a reparations council or board of trustees. You come up with the number and you take 20 years. I think it should be dispersed over a period of 20 years. The money dispersed for the, for the purposes of economic and educational renewal. So some <clears throat> might say California was not a slaveholding state. Right. There have been generations of people that were not involved in slaveholding at all. Why should California taxpayers pay for this issue when there are so many other issues that ail us? California might not have been a slave-owning state, but California sure as heck is a state in which many of your neighborhoods, many of your communities live at the effect of the lack of deep racial reconciliation that still plagues us today. We can go to Compton, we can go all kinds of communities. Every state in America is still living at the effect of the fact that we are not fundamentally healed and reconciled on the issue of race. Well, let's talk about some other issues now. Um, <clears throat> Health care, you're in favor of, of Medicare for all. Absolutely. Um, you're in favor of uh, free college or yes. uh, tuition free college. Yes. How do you pay for that? <laughs> okay, first of all, funny they never ask that when they want to invade a country, do they? We did, but yeah, okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe you did, but yeah. uh, no one has expected them to seriously answer. First of all, we're the richest country in the world. When you look at how much money people uh, have to pay in, a, annually on health care costs, as soon as that is removed, as soon as that uh, sigh of relief can be had, look how much more money that person, every person, has in their pocket that they will be spending that will increase, increase the consumer base, increase job creation, and increase tax base. So does that mean taxes go up? Well, it's not about taxes going up. Let's talk for a moment. We had a two, 2017 tax bill 
$2 trillion. Mm -hmm. 83 cents of every dollar went to the very, very richest and the very wealthiest corporations. What you do immediately, what I would do, is repeal that tax cut. We do something called policy issues on this show. This is where we got a series of issues, but you pick a card and then we sort of randomly get to address that issue. So uh, wh ah. which one did you pick? <clears throat> Marijuana. How yeah. is the marijuana experiment going and what can be improved? We should legalize marijuana immediately. We should release from prison all of the people who are there, who are there serving uh, uh, sentences for marijuana. And we should face the fact as a society that America's biggest drug dealer are legal pharmaceutical companies who have been knowingly over prescribing, uh, prescribing narcotic substances for years. Let's get to another game. This is called the name game. We have a little bit of fun here. We're looking for, thank you, Beyonce. We're looking for uh, one word or a real short phrase in response to these people. What's the first thing that comes to mind, okay? okay. Here we go. So we start with President Donald Trump. Replaceable. Uh, Vice President Mike Pence. Hypocritical. Senator Bernie Sanders, who you backed in 2016. I love him. Vice President Joe Biden. Cool. Come on in, Joe. Water's warm. <laughs> Senator Elizabeth Warren. Love her. Uh, Congressman Ted Lieu. Good guy. And Frances Fisher. My bestie, and I love her. And well, she was on our show recently, and she was singing your praises uh, to it's the rooftops. A mutual love. <laughs> there there and was a lot of love there. She's a wonderful woman. Let's talk a little bit more about you. This is okay. called personal issues. Okay. Uh, this is where we put 30 seconds on the clock, <clears throat> and we get to know you a little bit better. So here we go. Favorite type of music? Motown, R&B, great girl singers. All right. Last movie you saw in a theater? Oh my goodness. Oh, I don't remember. All right. First concert that you ever went to? Um, it was called Third World. It was reggae. Oh, that sounds fun. Favorite meal? I don't know. Last book you read? Uh, Americana by Timamandi Adichie. Favorite superhero? Wonder Woman. Uh, not surprised by that <laughs> choice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, we, we like to play music on this show. <clears throat> so we listened to your campaign event, and so we got a little Stevie Wonder. Higher ground. What do you love about this song? Well, who does, if you don't love Stevie Wonder, I mean, I love Stevie Wonder, but he's saying we got to reach higher ground, and that's really what my campaign is. We got to reach higher ground. Well, as we go to commercial break, this is your chance to rock out. <laughs> <laughs> Marianne Williamson, thank you so much thank for joining us for so the much. issue. Is best of luck on the campaign thank trail. You. Back with more of the issue is right now. For now, here's Stevie. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> From Southern California to the Bay Area, you're watching The Issue Is. Oh, you there. <laughs> I've seen your face before. The Empire strikes back at Governor Newsom at the state capitol, part of a ceremony after the legislature officially voted May the 4th as Star Wars Day in California. He tried to buy them off, but somehow that didn't work. May the 4th be with you, and welcome back. Time to check in with our panel for this week. We got a great one, Areva Martin, a prominent civil rights attorney and author and a talk show hoax. Her book on branding called Make It Rain has been endorsed by the likes of Dr. Phil, Dr. Travis Stork, and I imagine Dr. Pepper. Areva <laughs> is the president of the Special Needs Network. This week helped break ground on MLK Child and Wellbeing Center to help kids like her son who have autism. Well done on that. John Cobalt this is the John of the John and Ken. KFI's radio dynamically outspoken duo. Fun fact, it is believed to be the most listened to local radio show in the country, at times garnering a million listeners during the peak hours of their afternoon drive time slot. Congratulations on that. And we introduce a first timer to the issue is Los Angeles Times reporter Melanie Mason, who's assigned to cover the presidential candidates around the country. Some of her most recent articles discuss Better O'Rourke's $5 trillion climate plan, the issues most important to women of color, the racial gap in healthcare and support by Senators Harris and Booker for gay rights. Welcome, Melanie, to the party and uh, welcome you all to The Issue Is. Uh, so let's begin with this. We just had Marianne Williamson on the show making the case for reparations. What do you make of that, Ariva? Uh, I think anytime we have an opportunity to talk about racial injustices and how we end those injustices, it's an important conversation that should be had. I'm glad to see Marianne, you know, jumping into the social justice fray as she, you know, tries to embark upon this very long road to becoming the president. Are reparations a good idea? 
My dad uh, was from Poland. When he was 14, the Nazis came and took him. And he was working as a slave laborer on a farm for four years. So my father comes from that. I find it preposterous that I should be entitled to reparations. I didn't suffer, he did. And he never talked about it or brought it up the entire time. And I don't feel like I have any desire to go to Germany and demand money for what they put him through. I, I don't think holding people responsible for what happened 150 years ago is ever going to fly. And there's better conversations to have than that one. We're also having a different kind of conversation about gay rights this time around, especially because we have potentially the first gay president. This is the cover of Time magazine, which is uh, getting a whole lot of attention. And it, it has to do with Mayor Pete Buttigieg from South Bend, Indiana, his husband, and this phrase, first family. Um, what's well, been interesting is I think that there's been a lot of conversations among Democratic primary voters of a concern of, I like this and I accept this, but will there be broader acceptance in the general electorate? And I've heard that from gay Democrats as well. I think that there is a sense of, is America ready for a gay president? I think that there's a lot of enthusiasm around Mayor Pete and his family, but they're going to want to see more sort of evidence that the broader electorate, not just the Democratic primary, is ready to get behind this let's candidate. Pick, let's pick somebody that can win. John, do you think America's ready for that? I don't really care if he's gay. I don't think most people do. Now, why would a 37-year-old guy who's the mayor of South Bend, Indiana, be qualified for president? That's not being touched very much. In a crowded field like this, people have to play to their strengths. And for him, and his publicist talked openly about this, she had to get him out there and get people talking about him. And now I do think it's time for us to start asking yeah, Mayor Pete. does he Pete, have anything else? Well, well, I, I'm, a, I'm agreeing with you. Now it's time for us to learn what Mayor Pete has that would qualify him to be president. And, of course, uh, Mayor Pete is going to be here next week. So hopefully we'll get a chance to ask him well, some of those questions, you, uh, which would be interesting. <laughs> Beto O'Rourke was here this week, um, and uh, there, you know, he's getting some attention. There was one op-ed about him that's getting a special a lot of attention. This was in the Daily Beast. This was by a columnist named Margaret Carlson, and it's titled "Beto O'Rourke Blew It." Here's what she wrote: Beto reminds women of the worst boyfriend they ever had. Self-involved, convinced of his own charm, <laughs> chronically late if he shows up at all, worth a meal or two, but definitely not marriage material. How do you think the, the Beto rollout is going so far, John? He's a weirdo. <laughs> I don't get him. I can see the rationale for some of these people, even if I don't agree with him. I don't get Yeah, he's like this weird flake in your fraternity house. He's charismatic. But, yeah, what has he done? Why should he be president? I think he's having a hard time answering that question, which is why this op-ed piece is resonating with so many readers. Amelia, you were out with him this week. I was. I think that he's coming back to earth a little bit. I think it was a little bit inevitable because there was so much buildup when he got into the race. Remember, there's that Vanity Fair profile, this cover of him with the quote, I was born to be in it, which now he says was sort of taken out of context. Melanie got a chance to pick our music this week. She chose Beyonce. So... As we listen, John, who run the world? Who run the world? Girls. <laughs> Girls. Girls. Yes. It's in the song. You think I'm listening to Beyonce in my car? <laughs> well, on this show, since Melody picked the music, who run the world? Girls. Girls. Okay. We'll help you. We'll I'm, help you. I'm forced to go on with it. Yeah. yeah. I'm outnumbered. Next, we're talking Barr, Muller, and that chicken. Stay with us. <laughs> Well, you know the old song, I don't want to be a chicken, I don't want to be a duck, so I shake my butt? Well, this week we saw a fake chicken on Capitol Hill when the Attorney General Bill Barr refused to show up to his hearing in the House. It came after a contentious hearing in the Senate over his handling of the Mueller report. So let's talk about that and more with our panel, Melanie Mason of the LA Times, KFI's John Cobalt, and attorney and activist Ariva Martin. Uh, Ariva, as the attorney on the panel, uh, what did you make of the bar hearing? I know you, you tweeted about your support of what your, your friend Kamala Harris did. Yeah, I was really disappointed in Attorney General Barr. You know, when he parrots the president's language, no collusion, no collusion, uh, it, it really, uh, you know, gives the American people, I think, it lessens our trust in him and in the Department of Justice that he's running. So I think a very disappointing showing by the attorney general. This horse is really dead. <laughs> there was no collusion. It didn't happen. It was a hoax. Everybody waited two years, $25 million for the Mueller report. He released it. It's largely out there. Some redactions. Nothing happened. I don't know why people can't move on. Actually, some are moving on because CNN's ratings are down about 41 percent. 
Uh, it's are you concerned about the obstruction of justice aspect of this? All these cases I, that I were don't laid understand out? how he obstructed something that never happened. Well, that's it, not there, the legal was, standard for obstruction, well, so we should be clear about that. Yeah, but it's the rational, common person standard, I think. Where I think the average regular person, non-lawyer, says, well, if he didn't commit a crime, of course he's going to be yelling to, to want to fire everybody. Because, because imagine being persecuted for two years for something that never happened. I, I would be yelling and screaming and wanting to fire everybody, too, and I think that's the way most people feel. It's over. But There's no charges. That, it didn't happen. That's not the standard, John. That's like saying that you've been accused of a crime, and then you go and bribe a witness not to testify in that crime. You're then acquitted. The fact that you tried to bribe that witness still is obstruction but of he, justice. He so all, you can't he, dismiss all, he, all of the actions he, and the activities that the president did. All he did is yell at his did. staff, and, and the staff no, never, never even followed through. he did a lot more through. than yelling at his staff. He directed the White House counsel to lie, well, and we cannot dismiss well, well, then the Robert Mueller should have charged him with that, well, and he did Well, there's a policy in the Department of Justice against charging a sitting president. This is now a sub-issue of a sub-issue. The no. main thing is they didn't, the whole thing was Trump colluded with the Russian government to tilt the Hillary election. That has evaporated, never happened. I'm sure, Melanie, you want to get in between these two. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> I'm not so sure. Well, I can, I, my perspective from watching it was watching it as somebody who was following the 2020 campaign and watching to see who had any breakout moments among the Democrats. Remember, there are three presidential contenders who are sitting on that Senate Judiciary Committee, Cory Booker, Amy Klobuchar, and of course, Kamala Harris. Um, and I think of the three, the one who really capitalized on their time was Kamala Harris. I think she did have a breakout moment in having some very pointed questions with Attorney General Barr. She seemed to have him on his heels on a couple of exchanges, and it seemed like that was the type of thing that then got on the evening news or in the breakout cable news later on. All right, well, we're going to have to leave it there, but as we go to break, I want to play a little Reverend Al Green, mm. because he's going to be playing at the Greek Theater next mm. week. Um, and we want to let people know that we've got a special podcast with Ariva that we just recorded. Great. Speaking of love and happiness, this brings me love and happiness to announce this. Um, you can listen to that and listen to all of our podcasts wherever you stream. Just search for The Issue Is. And Ariva was one of our guests on our first ever edition of The Issue Is, which was exactly a week, a, a year ago this week. <laughs> We're going to memorialize that moment when we come back. Thank you, guys. To Great you. job, panel. Congratulations thank on you. your work. Yeah, yeah, seriously. <laughs> and thank you so much for joining us for our first show. It's Friday night, hoping each week we can learn a little bit about the key issues together and have some fun along the way. So let's begin that with Gavin Newsom. He's the former San Francisco mayor, current lieutenant governor, and frontrunner to be the next governor of the state of California. Thank you for being our first guest on our first show. Honored to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, let's talk about One year ago this week, the issue is debuted in Los Angeles. By the way, Whatever happened to that guy, anyways? The mission of the show has remained constant since week one. One year ago, we never could have imagined the quantity and quality of guests we'd get to talk to, including the President of the United States himself, multiple times. We've asked questions of important newsmakers on both sides of the aisle, and often seen more human and more interesting sides of them playing our games or dancing to our music, which we take a pride in creating. That includes our very first song, Justin Timberlake's Say Something. So, hit it, Francis. Oh, hold on, excuse me, Alex. Uh, we have something that might work a little better today. Hit <laughs> okay. it, Gloria. Okay. Music. Alex. Oh, my God. <laughs> Are you going to celebrate your first anniversary without your favorite guest and oh. dancing partner? Are you kidding me? Happy anniversary. Oh, my God, and many, Gloria. Many more. How are you? Our most Just frequent great. guest. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is so exciting. This is very exciting. And you're expanding to other cities? Yes, we're in San Francisco. We were number one in San Francisco so last cool. week. Yes. And not a surprise. Yes. So, right now. Oh, we're going to blow up the Let's do it. <laughs> As you. I always say, <laughs> Alex takes the cake. Uh, for sure. All right, are we going to dance? Of are course, we going to dance? We have to. That's our tradition. Okay. We're, everybody's going to dance with us? Let's just show us your move, Gloria. This is, this is your move, right? <laughs> so happy anniversary. Thank you all for what. Come on, Ariva. You can get into it. Let's go. And this is your real dance partner over here. You and John have danced together. The KFI crowd loves this combo. How about you? Even reporters can dance. We'll see you for year two next week. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you to our crew. 
thank you so much, the guys behind the scenes that make all this possible. All right, Gord, let's go. Let's do it. How cool is that? Thank you so much. Thank you for coming by.